the Thai kickboxing that maybe some of our viewers have seen. It, it's quite an exciting sport, well worth looking at. And once again, just to uh, reiterate, that is coming your way Wednesday nights. Okay, let's go to the bottom of the eighth inning and see if New Zealand can do something with the slants of the fog here. Owen Wolford fires a fastball that's fouled back. Wolford, as we mentioned earlier, from New Zealand. And what a great nickname, the fog. I love it. It's outstanding. Well, the, who was the fog? Was it Mel Torme? Mel Torme was the fog. Mel Torme was the fog, <laughs> American singer. Still is the fog. Mel's still performing around the United States. One ball, one strike to the leadoff hitter here. This is Peter Hartley. He's the first baseman. Seems like he's always leading off. Hartley uh, had a, having a tough time. He's grounded out to second twice and to the first baseman unassisted. So he's hit the ball to the right side three times, but on the ground. One ball, two strikes. Owen Wolford ahead in the count. Nobody out. Bottom of the eighth inning, no score. We're in extra innings. Wolford very deliberate. Ground ball down to short this time. And Van Dusen throws him out. So there's one away here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Hartley is grounded out four times. He is 0 for 4. This is Wayne Nichols. He's hitting 308 for the tournament. Nichols, the third baseman, he is flied to center field, grounded to the first baseman unassisted. Singled, went to second on a wild pitch, went to third on a pass ball, but was stranded. As New Zealand was unable to get him in, that's when Owen Wolford came in in the bottom half of the sixth inning and struck out John Joyce with the bases loaded and two outs. Nichols is really a baby face guy. Just an exciting youngster. Uh, really gets after some things. Good fielder too. He's a threat with the bat, but he also uh, he'll do the job at third. I think you don't realize sometimes how good these hitters are because the pitchers are are so dominant in this game. There's that tough rise. Boy. Did you see uh, Wayne Nichols uh, looking for a sinker, which is primarily what Wolford's been throwing, and suddenly Bowling gets, gets the ball that, that rises, <laughs> and it, he was really lucky to just get a piece of it. Disgusted at himself for swinging at a bad pitch, but it's so easy to do. The velocity with which that ball is coming in at the plate and the, the amount of movement that's involved in a sinking ball as opposed to a rising ball. Boy, he just came with a good fastball. You got to look uh, the same as uh, the fog did at his catcher. Cronkite to just put down a number one right down the hopper. One ball, two strikes, one out, bottom of the eighth, nobody on base, no score in the game. Chopper. Wolford's going to have to hurry. Boy, he threw it into the runner and a great play by the first baseman right. You know, I'm not so sure you don't have to have the best athlete at first base other than your pitcher here because we have seen these uh, first basemen do amazing things. All right, Wolford hurts himself by uh, fumbling a little bit, but look at that play and the agility of Jimmy Wright. And that's the second out. We're going to have a pinch hitter. This is Alan Russell, who will pinch hit for the designated hitter, John Lowe's, who's hitting third in the lineup for New Zealand. That means Russell stays in or else someone else comes in the ball game. The DH cannot come back in. All right. Oh, boy, he was going for a home run, wasn't he? Yeah, and he uh, he didn't get a very good pitch to hit. He tried to end this thing in a hurry. Well, let's see if we can pick out what the catcher is given there. All right, it's going to be some kind of be either the rise or the drop. Let's see what his sequence is. That was a curveball, wasn't it? Looked like it. Pitch outside, ball and a strike. A real pitching battle here. And uh, maybe they crossed themselves up. Well, that might be why like uh, he stuck down a one and he was uh, flapping it a little bit. Nunn's coming out to talk to his pitcher, Wolford. I was about to say earlier that New Zealand seems to breed the best pitchers in the world when it comes to fast pitch softball. And the United States, which is much more oriented toward overhand pitching, goes ahead and recruits New Zealand pitchers. Catcher or the uh, hitter is looking down, possibly in the. Oh, looky here! He was Little looking peak. at his sign. He peeking. Oh, he did it twice. You're absolutely right. Trying to get the sign. 
And that's what that conference was about between the catcher for the United States nuns and their pitcher Owen Wolford. Now they'll switch that around so he can't tell what's coming. There's a curveball breaking up and away. Russell is really an uppercutter. Instead of uh, swinging the bat quick and down with a little axe movement, he's trying to uppercut one out of the ballpark and so far hadn't come close. Missed that one a long way. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. This game going just about as everyone figured. Both clubs having a hard time scoring. They've come close but unable to do it. Got him. Got him looking. Picked up the outside corner. Good pitch by Wolford. So Russell, the pinch hitter, goes down, and so do the New Zealand ball club. As after eight complete innings now, we still have no score. It is the United States nothing and New Zealand nothing. Sags on the scoreboard here in Tacoma, Washington at Cheney Stadium. The USA and New Zealand, two very evenly matched ball clubs really going at it here in the second semifinal game, which will lead to the championship of the world fast pitch softball here in the fifth world championship held in Tacoma, Washington. The United States will bat in the top of the ninth inning. This is Russ Van Zorn, the hitter. Van Zorn hitting 267 for the series. He is 0 for 3 today. 0 for 2 make it. He sacrificed Bunnett back in the second inning. Struck out. Grounded down to the shortstop. Boy, he has had two superb plays in center field. He threw a runner out at third base. Uh, just made it look easy. And then a great running catch that uh, might, might be the play of the tournament. Well, he put the icing on the cake against New Zealand the first time these two teams played. The only time in this tournament. Hit a home run. United States won that game two to nothing. That pitch outside, two balls and a strike. Kevin Hurley he has gone all the way for New Zealand. He pitched eight innings in a previous extra inning ball game that was against the Bahamas. Emerged the winning pitcher. Now he's going into his ninth inning here against the United States. Rising fastball inside. Up and in for the second. First strike, one ball, one strike. The United States trying to get something going here in the top of the ninth inning. They've left five runners on base. Make that six. New Zealand has also left six runners on. The best scoring opportunities were in the fourth and sixth innings when the United States left two men on, but were unable to score. Chopper up the middle to the second baseman. He cannot make the play. As the, the hitter, Russ Van Zorn, again dives into first base. This time he didn't have to. He's going to have to dust himself off as the coach takes care of him out there. But anyway, the USA has a man on. Van Zorn is going to dust himself off and get everything back together. He really took a plunge into that bag. Well, one thing uh, we're sure of, uh, Wes, he was not watching the ball he was, as he was running to first. A lot of times we accuse people of watching the ball and it cost him a base hit or getting on on an air. I'll guarantee you Van Zorn didn't because uh, he was uh, going down early. That's one of the few times in the last three or four innings that we've seen Kevin Hurley come inside to a hitter and it cost him. As Van Zorn just chopped one right over his head, it was a tough play for the second baseman, and it goes as a base hit. That's the fourth hit, only the fourth, in eight innings plus for the United States, so they are averaging about one hit every other inning. And against Kevin Hurley, he's pitched a Super Bowl game. Now the United States will have to figure out their strategy. Do they bunt, hit and run, or exactly what? I would expect the bunt here. I think that's probably what we'll see, but really there's been very little success with the bunt by either team, and you just wonder if this left-hander couldn't pull that ball past uh, Peter Hartley at first. Hartley is in halfway uh, from first base looking for the bunt. All it would take is anything on the ground. Jimmy Wright is the hitter. There's nobody out. He squares around and takes up high for a ball. Well, we saw one excellent pickoff play by the United States in a situation like this where they call the pitch out and fire the ball down to the second baseman cutting in behind the runner and almost nailed the New Zealand runner. 
that they did. Of course, it's a little tougher here, Wes, with that left-handed hitter up because the catcher's got to uh, really step out. Here's a good bunt right to the first baseman. He'll have to throw to the second baseman covering, and the sacrifice works. So the USA will have a shot at winning this ball game here with a runner in scoring position, Russ Van Zorn out at second. Well, they executed the fundamentals that time. The bunt placed perfectly, and we have to remember Peter Hartley was halfway down the line to start with. Here is the bunt, just drops it soft as a feather, and here's Hartley in your picture quickly. A left-handed throw on first baseman on the inside of the diamond, and the second baseman really did a good job giving him something to throw to. They play good fundamental baseball, all these teams. The good teams just don't make the mistakes that the other teams uh, did make in this tournament, which is why the good teams are in this. Good, solid, fundamental baseball or softball. Now the hitter is Don Van Dusen. He really will play Pepper up the middle. He's gone, uh, gone out short to first twice. Hit a fly ball at the uh, third baseman was able to handle in foul territory. But uh, the pattern of Van uh, Dusen, the times we've watched him in this tournament, is pretty much uh, to go up the middle. You were looking at Russ Van Zorn, the runner out at second base. That uniform is dirty from diving and making a great catch as a center fielder and also diving into first base. He's really been in the dirt today. Van Zorn with a home run uh, Pick pen. in the previous <laughs> game, as we mentioned, to, against New Zealand. He's been kind of a thorn in the side of the New Zealand ball club. Number seven hitter Don Van Dusen. Fouls one down at the plate. Hurley keeping the ball outside again. One ball, one strike, one out. We're in the top of the ninth inning of a seven inning ball game. Second inning of extra innings. No score. The United States has a base runner out at second, as you see. And they're trying to score the first run of this ball game. Don Van Dusen hitting 200 for the tournament. Chopper back to the mound. The runner was coming over. They had a play at third, but did not go for him. Well, they got away with one, Wes, Boy. because that was a mistake on Van Zorn's part. You've got to wait and make sure the ball's either hit to the right side or is through on the left side. Up the middle, fundamentally, you just don't go. The pitcher, Hurley, he lost track. He did not take a look. Hurley, he did not even look over there, as you said. He probably would have had him had he thrown to the third baseman covering. But anyway, the USA has a runner over at third base now with two away. Of course, and that puts you. a lot more pressure on the infielders. They cannot afford to make a mistake now. Maybe and it was a good deal with Hurley. He didn't throw over. Remember the time he threw to second base and good things didn't yeah. happen. So it might he just might strike this guy out himself. Might have been a good leg. Yeah, Hurley, he did throw a ball away back in the sixth inning to allow the USA a chance to score. They didn't take advantage of it and were unable to. Now the United States will send up yet another left-handed hitter. This is Nels Cronkright hitting 250. That's not too bad in a tournament like this. And Cronkright, if he could just chop something off the ground and run like crazy from that left side, he'd have a chance to beat it out and score what could be the winning run. He did the last time as he got a base hit uh, off the shortstop. He's one for three in the game, struck out, popped to the shortstop and single. Foul this one back. Boy, he was really out in front. You can see him making every effort he can to get on top of that rising fastball to try and hit it down into the ground. From uh, one more time, boy, look at the big stride that Hurley gives you. The ball is going up, and uh, I'll tell you, the left-hander did do a good job to fight that thing off. Hurley, he really steps out at you. Big sure stride. Does. 46 feet away, and by the time he finishes his stride, about 40 feet. That ball's really coming in hard. Crankwright tried to pull an outside pitch and just chop it down into the ground. Made a good, good attempt at it. Boy, the third base coach is really talking to Hurley. He's just all over him. Popped him up. The first baseman in foul territory will make the catch. That's Hartley, and the United States has turned away again here in the top of the ninth inning. Good pitching by Kevin Hurley. At the end of eight and a half, we're right where we started in the first inning. It's nothing, nothing. Well, Wes, uh, among the things that uh, ESPN is, uh, is staying with and covering, we've talked about karate, boxing. 
We also are going to hit the road with auto racing Sunday evenings, 9 Eastern. Uh, USAC Sprint and Midget Class competition will be featured. And I tell you, there's a thrill a minute in this. You want to join your total sports network each Sunday with a repeat telecast at 1130. So uh, there it is. Uh, Sunday's at 11 Eastern time, 6 o'clock Pacific time for USAC and Sprint, uh, Sprint and Midget Class uh, competition. Should be excellent. Well, we're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Uh, j let's just talk a little bit about the United States team from Midland, Michigan. 13 of the players played on that team. Uh, four who were unable to come to this tournament have been replaced by other players, but it was an outstanding team. They finished with 80 wins and 28 losses in 108 games and winning the United States National Championship. They had five All-Americans on their team this year. Owen Wolford, who you're looking at right now, the, the pitcher in relief for the United States, another pitcher named Bob Ryan, Nels Cronkwright, the catcher, Jeff Peck, their team captain, the third baseman, and Jack Starling, the manager of the team at second. All were All-Americans in fast pitch softball. So quite a ball club for the USA. New Zealand with a good club, too, and here in the bottom of the ninth, starting things off is Jimmy Cotter. Jimmy Cotter hitting 545 for the tournament, was walked intentionally his last time up. Turned out to be a good move as the United States got out of a tough inning on a strikeout. Owen Wolford mowing down John Joyce. So Cotter is really looking at Wolford for the first time in this ball game following the intentional walk, and he is behind in the count quickly, 0-2. Wolford nicknamed the Fog because of the speed with which he delivers his fastball. Off-speed pitch outside. You'll notice that these pitchers are all pretty deliberate. They don't just step on the mound and throw the ball. They take their time, and they have to go through a series of familiar motions to get themselves ready to deliver the ball there. Wolford with his hands high over his head. Good sinking fastball. If it looks hard to you to hit these pitchers, believe me, folks, it is. It's very difficult, and that's why uh, you'll see so many of the hitters struggling. That's why the pitchers dominate the game. They're only 46 feet away. They can make that ball dance so many different ways that you can hardly believe it. And that's what Wolford has been doing since he came in in the sixth. Got him. Boy, first the sinker to get him looking down low and then a rising fastball up high and no chance. You Cotter talk about strikes how out. tough it is, Wes. You know, they would say that the curveball will send you home uh, in the spring training and the uh, rise probably send you back to slow pitch because I'll tell you what, these guys really <laughs> turn loose. That's, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot of people in slow pitch simply because they don't like a game like this where it's nothing to nothing in the ninth. There have been a total of seven hits, and Wolford and Hurley, the way they're throwing, we could be here until uh, another day or two. Don't say that. <laughs> Do not say that. Bite your tongue. <laughs> All right, here's John Joyce. Joyce got blown away on three pitches his last time up, so he'll be looking for some revenge. We're going to have a conference now between... Uh, Owen Wolford and his catcher. Crack right. Wolford, one of the outstanding pitchers in the world today, which is very appropriate because he's in the World Championship Tournament in the semifinal round. John Joyce, the hitter, looks at a fastball up high. We're in the bottom of the ninth. This game was scheduled for seven, but neither team has been able to score, so we're in extra innings. Semi-final round. The winner of this game goes on to meet Canada in the finals. Line drive fouled on the right field line. No play will be made. Right fielder for the USA. Miller goes over to pick it up, throw it back. Owen is married, uh, got a, a daughter and a son. His daughter's got a very unusual name, Tanika. Boy, he must be a, a, a dream for a youngster who likes to play softball. Can you imagine your dad coming home and his youngster comes over and says, hey, Daddy, can we play catch? And he says, sure, let's go. <laughs> I was going to ask you. <laughs> what a dream father, huh? That's right. <laughs> one ball, one strike, one out. Nobody on base. Bottom of the ninth inning. New Zealand trying to get somebody on, get things started here. Ooh, that ball moved. 
up and away. Two balls, one strike. Softball is a game uh, at this level. You find out a lot about yourself because everything usually does come down, as we've mentioned before, to uh, a crucial situation late in the game. We just haven't seen any routes. There have been routes early in the tournament, particularly uh, uh, some of the, uh, the lesser teams. But, boy, that hasn't been uh, the case since we started doing these 10 games. Two balls, two strikes. The fifth hitter in the lineup, John Joyce, fouls this one down the right field line. Well, it's interesting to see how closely uh, these games can be figured out by the experts because before the tournament even began, these two teams were picked to be the top clubs and now here facing each other. It's just a bunch of goose eggs up on the board. Neither team able to crash through against the pitching of the other. And you just got to keep hanging in there because a break one way or the other could decide this game at any time. Boy, he laid off a tough pitch. Mm, that was a tough pitch. That runs the count full. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Wes, didn't you find that, though, when you uh, going in the bigs against the real good uh, people who really threw hard, that, and you had a good one going for the Dodgers, that it would come down to one break, maybe a base on balls? Yes, I did, but I've never seen a battle like this one. Got him. Boy, he knew it, too. Joyce on his way back to the dugout. Darcy didn't get a strikeout in his uh, stint on the mound. Five and two-thirds innings, and already uh, the fog, Owen Walford has four since he came on in the bottom of the sixth. Well, here's Jamie Campbell, the right fielder, hitting 500. He's having a great tournament, but 0 for 2 today. Good hitter. Off speed pitch up high, but he swung at it for a strike. And there is, is one reason why these pitchers are so tough. You see a third pitch like that after the sinker and the riser, they come in with something like that breaking ball. I don't know what I would do if I was playing in a league like this. I think I would try to eliminate certain pitches and just look for something. Not, I think you have to guess. Not too many of these hitters look like they're guessing. They look like they're just no, trying they're to hit what they see. Right. And I really think they would be better off guessing. There's a line drive to right field, but right there to make the catch for the USA is Mr. Miller. So at the end of nine complete now, as the New Zealand ball club goes down one, two, three, the score is still just the way it was in the first inning. Nothing to nothing. Part of the crowd enjoying the festivities here today at Cheney Stadium in Tacoma, Washington for the World Softball Fast Pitch Championships. Nice ballpark here. Holds about 10,000 people. We're about half full right now. And we mentioned before they've had some super crowds. The fans really enjoying themselves. Tacoma just about 30, 40 miles south of Seattle. And they've been giving a lot of publicity in the local papers to what's been going on here, these championships. Teams coming from all over the world. We mentioned some of them before. Uh, New Guinea, Argentina, Panama, China, and Mexico have all been eliminated. South Africa, the Virgin Islands, Dominican Republic, Guam, Japan, and the Bahamas also all eliminated. Still left Canada already in the final round, and these two teams right here. New Zealand and the United States of America battling for nine innings to a nothing nothing tie and we're in the top of the tenth inning the USA hitting they're the visiting ball club this is Jack Starling who lays down a bunt close play they called him safe I think his foot was off the bag the umpire wanted to call him out and then changed his mind and called him safe well we had a very slow call down there and the uh, the umpires really have done an excellent job in making the calls quickly in this case it didn't happen Wes but hey, how about the skipper uh, getting it rolling as he just dropped a perfect bunt. You got a guy who can handle the bat and Rod Johnson up now, so the U.S. definitely has some good things going. Well, that was a remarkable job because Starling is a right-handed hitter, and it's a lot harder for them to break out of that box and beat out an infield hit. But he really hustled down the line. I'll say this, the, uh, the umpire had the good judgment because I really felt he was safe to hang on. He was going to go out, and then he... Uh, 
He just made his decision and stayed with it. Nobody beefed. Rod Johnson, who has won three games for the USA, three of the seven that they have won already in this tournament with clutch base hits. He'll probably be bunting here. It's down to the third baseman. He'll throw back to second. They dropped the ball. Boy, the throw was on the money, but he couldn't hang on. That's the shortstop. Rogers, who dropped it. Here's another look. Here's the throw. Let's see if, uh, boy, it was a decent throw. Nothing wrong with it. So the United States has runners at first and second. The two-hole hitter, Barry Cashin, is up. And they really got something going. Got to believe they'll be bunting again, Wes. I would think so. This is without a doubt the best opportunity the USA has has had in this ball game yet to score. And here's the situation now with a runner on first and second. Now if you bunt, the third baseman comes down. That is not easy for the shortstop to get over to third and cover. So you really have an excellent opportunity. If you can push the ball down the third baseline, you got to keep it out of the middle and keep it away from the first sacker. Back in the fourth inning, the USA had runners at first and second, but with one out. They had two runners on back in the sixth inning. But again, that was with one out. So here they have runners at first and second with nobody out. In baseball, Wes, I know, the, you know, they'll use the play call to converge where everybody runs at them and the shortstop kicks over to third. But you can't do that here, really. We've got a little huddle at first as the runners are getting together. It's so important now. It's on the line. They don't want to make a mistake. I would think the big issue here, if you're at second base in the form of Jack Starling, boy, when that ball's down, you're going in sliding immediately. Be sure the ball's down. You can't afford a double play here if the ball is popped up or hit uh, on a line at somebody as they attempt to bunt. Jack Starling, the manager of this ball club, playing manager out at second base, called timeout, came over, talked to his runner at first, Rod Johnson, and his first base coach. They went into a conference, and maybe we'll see the results of that conference right now. Here is Barry Cashin. Cashin hitting 250. There is nobody warming up in the bullpen for New Zealand. So, so Kevin Hurley he is the man to do the job one way or the other. The ball has got to be bunted down the third baseline. Make that third baseman feel it. He's got to turn and throw to a shortstop on the run. Boy, he draws his bat back. He's got a good eye. I, I really like this Barry Cashin. He's got one of the quickest bats I think I've seen in all of these games. You know, Wes, just taking a look at how New Zealand's plan is, if Cashin could just hit a ground ball to the shortstop, just hit a, a simple ground ball to the shortstop, it would score the run. Because the shortstop wouldn't be there. He's overcovering right, third he base. He's on the move. <laughs> in case of the bunt. All right, the first and third basemen are in very close, about halfway between their bags and the plate. We're going to have timeout called here. The New Zealand manager is coming out, and he's going to talk to his catcher. Now maybe he's going to uh, perhaps give him some advice on what pitches to call for as far as. Well I would think you'd have to go with the rise in this situation trying to pop him up as he attempts to bunt the ball. I would think so or maybe maybe he's warning them about a possible hit and run who knows. Well you know what you could do if you had a lot of courage I guess you could fake the bunt and try and run behind the third baseman. The problem is there's a left handed hitter and it's an easy throw. One ball no strikes nobody out. That's a good bunt to the third baseman. He'll have to go to first. Boy, he did his job. Boy, now the USA really has a good chance to score. Bruce Miller will be the hitter. Behind him is Jeff Peck in case they decide to walk Bruce Miller. Boy, it really was a perfect bunt on the uh, left-hand side. The third baseman has no choice but to go to first. So Miller is up. There is an open base. Of course, uh, I guess conceivably you could walk him, but that would bring up Peck, who has some ability. Well, now we're as usual as we've seen before in situations like this. We're going to have conferences by both ball clubs. The entire infield for New Zealand is meeting around the mound to talk to their pitcher, whereas the USA has meetings going on at second base and third base. The hitters down there are talking to the runner at third base. That is the coach, Tony Avila, the third base coach, going down to talk to his runner at second. Now he's coming back to talk to his hitter. There's a lot of emotion in these games. That's one it of the really things I've, I've really noticed. Well, and you know, Wes, one of the interesting situations here when you have a runner at second and third is that, uh, you know, do you always start the runner? I think you do. Remember, neither runner can leave the bag until the pitch has left the pitcher's hand. Now they will have an intentional walk here of Bruce Miller. 
So that's going to bring up Jeff Peck. Now Peck has not had an easy time today. Peck has been walked twice, but he has also flied out twice, once to left, once to center. Of course, if he flies out deep enough, that would be just fine as far as the USA is concerned. That's ball three, three balls, no strikes. And this will be ball four coming up to Bruce Miller, the number three hitter in the USA lineup and the right fielder. And there it is. Of course, this puts a lot more pressure on the pitcher. Now there's no place to put another hitter. A walk would force in a run, so he's got to go right after Peck, the hitter. He has got the bat on the ball. He's hit fly balls to left in the sixth. In the eighth, in the eighth he uh, went to center field, so he definitely has the ability to get the ball out of the uh, infield. In fact, the only other two times at bat, uh, Wes, he picked up a couple of base on balls, so uh, the strategy really uh, doesn't look all that good if you're a fan of the U.S. Now, the second baseman is sneaking in somewhat. The shortstop uh, is staying back, so a ground ball to second or short might result in a run. First and third baseman are in. Outfield not too deep, pretty shallow. Fastball up high. I'll tell you the truth, if you really take a look at a scattering report here, here Peck has hit the ball in the outfield twice, deep enough to score runner. I am, I'm just not so sure that I wouldn't have tried to go for the strikeout uh, against Miller. I really believe Peck has the ability to get one in the outfield. I don't think I would have walked the man either. I, I'm not so sure about that, but let's see. There it is. Fly ball to left field. This is going to do something. It's over his head. One run will score. Here comes Johnson to score. Other runner holds up at third. It's a bases loaded double. The USA leads two to nothing. Well, the right man in the right spot is Peck Hitwin, and actually Miller should have scored too. A little base running miscue possibly. Miller did not go halfway on the shot to left. He uh, apparently was back tagging, but the left fielder was in a little tight. Cheney, and look at this. Peck, who has gotten the ball up in the outfield twice, does his job again, but it's not a sacrifice fly. This ball gets over Cheney's head, drops. The U.S. should have scored three runs here, Wes. Well, two ought to do it behind the fog. Well, After you, the struggle we've seen, it would just be almost a miracle for New Zealand to come up with two or more runs in their half of the inning. And besides, this inning isn't over yet. The, the USA has runners at second and third again with only one out. And we've got to keep in mind, the guy who got it all going was the skipper, Jack Starling. He dropped a perfect bunt. We uh, do have a, a great deal left. There is only one out. You got a decent hitter up in Van uh, Zorn. This is Russ Van Zorn, who has been uh, one of the heroes of the team throughout the series. He fouls this one back. You know what's interesting? I, uh, I really give uh, Peck credit for being a smart hitter because he hit a high outside pitch, drove it to the opposite field, got it up in the air and out deep enough to get that run home. But he looked like he was guessing well with the pitcher. He was looking for something out of way, and he really handled it well. And questionable strategy, really, by New Zealand playing Cheney tight. Even if they give up the one run on the sacrifice fly, they're not out of it. Now, to give up two and the men on second and third, you really uh, wonder about that. He was in very shallow because the ball was a fly ball. Well, I think they just feel that one run is, is too many in a game of this nature, and they're, they're probably right. So they had their outfield playing in. It was a gamble, and it just didn't pay off. Now the USA has a chance to really add to this lead. Van Zorn the hitter, no balls, one strike, one out. First base is open as there are runners at second and third. You know, they really don't have the keystone pulled in in a do or die situation here, and they can't afford to give up another one, but uh, both the keystone people uh, step behind the bag. They're gonna have a tough time throwing someone out at the plate. Here's the squeeze. It's gonna work. They've gotta go to first. Well, the USA adds to their lead, and things are looking better and better for their ball club as New Zealand is going to have a very tough time coming back from a 3-0 deficit. Well, this is really intelligent because this pitcher who throws so well does not feel his position well, doesn't get off the mound, and it's cake on a squeeze. You want to put the ball down in the middle of the diamond. You do not want to get it on, uh, on the line so you have a chance for a foul ball. Hurley, he does not really feel his position all that well. We've seen him make an error, and so the United States is up three zip. Well, the error is what kept this inning alive because after the bunt by the manager, Jack Starling, Rod Johnson bunted to the third baseman who threw the ball away.
Johnson actually made a uh, the third baseman actually made a good throw to second but the ball was dropped by the shortstop and that kept the inning alive. Then the sacrifice by Barry Cash and put runners at second and third an intentional walk to Bruce Miller loaded the bases and Peck delivered the double over the left fielder's head. Now the squeeze play to make it three to nothing still two outs. The United States hitting here in the top half of the tenth inning. Early he isn't out of this thing either because Wright has been right on him. That was a good looking cut. The hitter Jimmy Wright does not have a hit today. He has popped out to third, ran it out to third, flied to left, and sacrificed. Bunting game has really paid off for us. Uh, excuse me, West it has really paid off. Three bunts in this inning, all figuring. Starling uh, leads it off with the drag. The effort by Johnson to advance the runner, and he winds up at first himself, and then a perfectly executed squeeze by Van Zorn. And you can't lead off in softball, so it does have to be perfectly executed. Well, the bunt is a very important weapon in this game. We've seen that. Little looper into center field. Coming on hard is Cotter to make the catch. But before the USA can be retired here in the top of the 10th inning, they break the scoreless tie by scoring three runs on two base hits, one a clutch double by Jeff Peck, and they get some assistance with an error from the shortstop of New Zealand. So at the end of nine and a half innings with New Zealand coming up, it is the USA three and New Zealand nothing. Boy, how would you like to have to be in New Zealand right now and look at the fog? Owen Wolford is, he is called the fog and know that you have to go out there and score at least three runs off one of the greatest pitchers in the world today. Do I have another choice? <laughs> Can I go to a movie? <laughs> yeah, it is tough. Um, give credit to that United States Ball Club for uh, an excellent rally. And uh, isn't it nice that the skipper who uh, had the courage to pinch hit for himself, who had the courage to take Darcy out of there when he was throwing decent, had the courage to intentionally watch uh, walk Cotter, he uh, drops the bunt to get it going, and uh, really, uh, boy, that that was one of the crucial parts of this ball game. Could uh, mean the world title. It was a very, very close play at first base, and the umpire looked like he wanted to call him out, and at the last second, perhaps realized he was wrong, changed his mind, and went to the safe sign. We're going to show you another shot here of Jeff Peck's double with the outfield playing in and the bases loaded. Now look. As you see, Chain trying to get back to make this catch and at least holds the one run, but no chance. He was just in too shallow. The U.S. got two runs off of this double, scored another and a squeeze play. They lead three to nothing in the bottom of the 10th inning. New Zealand must score at least three or they are out of the tournament. Chain the left fielder, rounds one to short and he is thrown out. Well, how about a pair of hands? That shortstop showed you him right there. Van Dusen just went to his left and swallowed up that ground ball, made it look routine. What a ball game this has been, and we mentioned throughout how quickly a rally can begin and a team can suddenly score, and we just saw how it happened with the USA breaking through at last in the top of the 10th. Now carrying that lead here into the bottom of the 10th inning with one out, nobody on. New Zealand sending up Terry Nunn's. Chops went off the plate. That's a tough play. I don't think they're going to get him, but they do. Oh, the catcher bounces out there and makes the play. That had his crack right. Wes, I'll tell you what, I had to agree with you. I didn't think he had a chance. Look at the agility here. He comes off the uh, comes uh, out from behind the dish. Now he's a right-handed thrower, so he's got to pivot. He's got to throw on the run. The only chance. And he gets him by several steps. I really didn't think he had a chance either. You know, he threw that ball just like an infielder. On the run, didn't have to set up, just flipped it with his wrist. Good athlete back there catching for the United States. Cronkright. Nels Cronkright. Now the last hope for New Zealand. And we'll see if they can stay alive. This is Rogers. Boy, New Zealand has got to be feeling uh, uh, that they're jinxed now going against this Wolford. Wolford going for his second consecutive win over his former teammates and countrymen. Boy, that's that's a tough one to swallow for New Zealand if they don't win this ball game to lose to somebody like him who won six games for New Zealand in the World Championships four years ago that were held in New Zealand. Now a chance to win for the United States. Swung on and missed and Wolford 
is on scored upon in this tournament. He won six games, as we mentioned, four years ago. He has won four already here. If he wins today, that'll be five, which means 11-0 in the last two World's Championships and not a run allowed in this one. Count goes to three balls, one strike. Three and one, two outs. New Zealand trails here in the bottom of the 10th, three to nothing. This game was scheduled for seven innings. We have gone to the 10th. And now, the fog, Owen Wolford is one pitch away from a USA victory. He got him! That's it, the USA goes to the finals. They will play Canada. We will have that game upcoming at a future date on ESPN. And the USA players have a huge celebration around the home plate area as Wolford, for the second time in this tournament, has beaten his ex-teammates. And the USA remains undefeated. Another shutout that is now seven out of eight shutouts for the United States pitchers. And the two teams will meet in the home plate area, shake hands, congratulate each other. New Zealand, a fine ball club, losing a very tough ball game. Hurley, he pitched brilliantly for New Zealand and the losing cause errors kind of did him in. But what a ball game it was, game number eight of this series. And we really enjoyed it. I'll tell you, Wes, the, uh, you know, you just had the feeling uh, that they definitely could get it done. The right man in the right place up to the dish in the uh, form of, uh, uh, of Jeff, uh, I'm, I'm struggling for a name here because we're a little excited. That was Jeff Peck. Jeff Peck got the job done. He had hit uh, two previous fly balls. He got it done. Wolford with a fine relief, and uh, that's all it is. It's America and Canada. All right, the final score of the United States, three and Canada, nothing. We'll be right back after this word. A 10-inning thriller between the United States and New Zealand. This is the hit that broke it open in the top of the 10th. Jeff Peck, with the bases loaded, drives a ball over the left fielder's head, who is playing in shallow to prevent one run from scoring. Instead, the United States comes up with a big three, and it is Jeff Peck who drove in the winning run. And one other besides, the United States went on to add another run following this hit on a squeeze play and won the game 3 to nothing behind Owen Wolford, nicknamed the fog so the united states will advance to the final round against canada it was a sensational ball game my name is wes parker i was helped here by irv brown in game number eight we hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and we're going to say goodbye thanks again Just want to remind you, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the Total Sports Network.